Welcome to For Boomerang, an exciting school-to-home reading adventure. Parents, you know you are the first and most important teacher for your child. Studies show that family involvement enhances a child's basic reading and writing skills. For Boomerang is an easy way to get involved and show your child that learning is fun and important. By working with your child on the For Boomerang program, you will be encouraging your child to study, learn, and stay in school. The For Boomerang program includes one flying rhinoceros learning book, a copy of this video, and a For Boomerang adventure pack, which includes games and activities for you and your child to complete together. Now, before the story begins, there's a short section called Get Ready to Read. Now, this is your chance to get to meet the author and hear some questions that are going to get you and your child excited about what you're going to read. Next is the Let's Read section. Have your child read along as the narrator reads from the book. Now, there are several breaks in the story, but you can stop the tape whenever you like, and you can start it up again the next day. You can also stop the tape to ask or answer any questions your child might have about the story, or to talk about some of the fun facts that are scattered throughout the book. Stick around after the story, and I'll have some questions for you. After each question, stop the tape and find the answer together. The For Boomerang Adventure Pack is filled with games and activities you and your child can do together. You can use it before or after you've read the story. The activities in the Adventure Pack will help reinforce both the concepts taught in the book and the skills your child is learning in school. As a special treat, we'll end the video with a boom tune, and you're just going to have to stick around to see what a boom tune is. But first, as we get ready to read, let's meet the authors. Hi, I'm Julie Hansen, one of the authors of I Am Jenny. In the book I Am Jenny, Jenny the dog loves to run all over Farmer Bob's farm and climb things and swim and roll down hills. And in one of the parts of the book, she actually crawls underneath a cow. I'm going to teach you how to draw a cow. Cows are actually very simple to draw. They're just a bunch of circles and lines. The first thing we're going to start out with is the cow's nose. So in the middle of my paper, I'm going to draw a circle. It doesn't need to be a perfect circle. The next thing I'm going to do is draw part of a triangle, a little bit round on the top, up above the circle. Now that's going to be the cow's head. Some cows have horns, and a lot of the cows on Farmer Bob's farm have really long horns. So out of the top of this cow's head, we'll stick some really big long horns, one on each side. Right underneath, we can draw some little tiny ears that are the shapes of leaves. If you want to, you can draw a little line inside for the inside of her ears. Next, we're going to draw the cow's eyes. Eyes can be really simple or they can be really complicated. You can use circles or you can use little dots. I like to use little tiny dots on my cows. The next thing we'll do are add some nostrils. Draw a letter C on one side of this cow's nose then turn it around and draw it backwards on the other side. You can draw more nostrils right inside to make the cow look more dimensional. If you want to add a tongue hanging out of her mouth, you can do that. Now for her body, we'll go ahead and draw one big circle. And then out of the bottom, we'll draw all of her legs. We'll start with some long lines. And then at the very bottom, draw an upside down horseshoe shape, a line across the bottom. The same thing on the other side. And then draw one line up the middle to look like toes. Now there are two of her legs. Cows have four legs, so we'll add the other ones right behind there. Now part of them might be covered up by the other hooves, but that's okay. And last but not least, she needs a tail. So right out the back, we'll draw a little skinny tail with some fur at the end. And there we have one of Farmer Bob's cows. One of the reasons that I like cows is because I'm from a town called Tillamook where we have a lot of cows. And we have a factory where we make cheese and ice cream and I absolutely love ice cream. My favorite flavor of ice cream is actually called brown cow ice cream. Have you ever gotten to visit a farm where you got to see cows or feed cows or maybe even a cheese factory or an ice cream factory where they make ice cream? What's your favorite thing to do when you play outside? 
Jenny the dog loves to play around Farmer Bob's farm. She loves to run and crawl and jump. Follow along as we read I Am Jenny. I am Jenny. I love to run. I run by the barn. I crawl under a cow. I climb over a pig. I dance around some chickens. I jump over a sheep. I swim under some ducks. I sit on Farmer Bob. I tiptoe near a bull. I roll down a hill. I land on a rooster. I stop at my dish. I eat my dinner. I am tired. I think I'll go to sleep. Let's review the glossary. Run. Crawl. Climb. Dance. Jump. Swim. Sit. Tiptoe. Roll. Land. Eat. Sleep. you enjoyed reading I Am Jenny, now I'm going to ask you some questions about what you just read. Jenny is Farmer Bob's dog. What does Jenny love to do? Jenny loves to run. What does Jenny crawl under? Jenny crawls under a cow. What does Jenny jump over? Jenny jumps over a sheep. Which farm animal does Jenny land on? Jenny lands on a rooster. At the end of the story, what does Jenny do? Jenny is tired. She goes to sleep. Can you read all the action words in the glossary? Turn to pages 30 and 31 to see if you were right.
Thank you for reading with me. Stay tuned for a boom tune and we'll see you next time. This is Philip the Chick. Philip has planted a seed. Seeds have three main parts. There is the seed coat. The seed coat is the hard protected coat that covers the outside of the seed. There is the stored food. The stored food is what the seed uses for energy as it grows into a plant. Then there is the plant embryo. The plant embryo is the little tiny plant that will grow out of the seed. Philip wants his seed to grow into a big, strong plant. The process of a seed growing into a plant is called germination. For a seed to grow into a plant, it needs air, water, and sunlight. Most healthy plants also need the nutrients that they get from the soil. The seed begins to grow when the weather gets warmer and the rain falls. If there is no rain, a seed can begin growing if it is watered. I said a seed can begin growing if somebody waters it. Once the seed is warm and wet, the seed coat gets soft and falls away. The seed can now soak up the water and begin to grow. The tiny seed sprouts a root and root hairs that will take in water and nutrients from the soil. The tiny sprout pokes its head out of the soil and into the sunlight. Tiny leaves and buds begin to sprout. By the time the plant has used its stored energy, it has green leaves. The color is made by chlorophyll. When a plant is all grown up, it will make more seeds so that more plants can grow. Some people add extra nutrients and fertilizer to the soil to help plants grow even bigger and stronger. Thanks to Philip's help and hard work, it seems his seed has indeed grown into a strong little plant. <laughs>